Coming up, there was a bit of a scare on campus. And the UT10 news crew is lending a helping hand. Plus, Casey Bailey has a sneak peek of Savage Arena. Your news in 10 minutes starts now. Thanks for joining us. I'm Philip Levering. And I'm Matt Jasinski. A bomb threat caused the evacuation of a UT building yesterday afternoon. On Thursday at 3 o'clock, two anonymous phone calls were received claiming a bomb had been placed in Stranahan Hall. UT police arrived at the scene and immediately secured the building. The department's K-9 unit was called in to conduct a thorough search. Nothing was found, but the threat is not taken lightly. Uh, causing this type of disruption is a felony, and that we vigorously pursue this, and the courts really frown upon it. So you know you can you can uh, face some pretty serious consequences if uh, you're engaged in this. For now, Newton says the building is clear and the incident is under investigation. With acts of campus violence taking place across the nation, UT is adding to its early warning system. Nine recently installed public address sirens inform students of immediate dangers and how to stay safe. The sirens are a part of the UT Alert Notification System, which aims to be the first warning for on-campus emergencies. The system also includes Red Alert, a service that contacts students via email, text message, or phone in the event of an immediate safety concern. Students can still use the blue emergency phones throughout campus to inform UT police of a threat. UT is taking a silent stand against domestic violence. The Sexual Assault and Prevention Program and UT's United for Respect and Nonviolence is sponsoring an on-campus display. Fifty freestanding red silhouettes of women can be seen at various locations. Each has a name and a story about domestic violence that resulted in death. All the figures represent someone with a connection to UT. Displays can be seen in the First Year Experience Office, the I House, and the Eberly Center. This is all a part of the Silent Witness Program, which was founded in 1991 in Minnesota and has now spread to all 50 states. The group's goal is to eliminate domestic violence murders across the country by 2010. With Thanksgiving about a month away, you may be thinking about what food to put on the table. But for the less fortunate, the Cherry Street Mission Ministries is there not only on holidays, but all year round. On Tuesday, the UT10 News Team helped serve dinner at the Food Service and Community Center. It's just one of five buildings that the mission operates in downtown Toledo. The staff at Cherry Street hopes the community will do their part. We always need volunteers at all times, just like your students during the day coming down and helping in the mess hall. And there's various opportunities for volunteers down here at the mission. Director of Community Service Roz Goodwin says right now their greatest needs are cleaning and hygiene products. Donations can be dropped off at 1919 West Madison Street, which is at the corner of Madison and 20th. You know what, Matt? We had a pretty good time helping out with the team. We sure did, Phil. And speaking of team, Melissa, how are the Rockets going to do this week? Thanks, guys. After winning 13-10 after winning last Saturday, the Rockets are practicing hard. You know, we have to really focus on Northern Illinois. They have a, a very good football team. They, they run a, a really good uh, a defense, and, and they're, they're on a roll right now. Last year, the Rockets rolled over the Huskies 70-21. to And after last week's game, all pressure is on the players to live up to their fans' renewed expectations. The Rockets will have to continue to work hard to get the win this weekend against a team that held their own against Tennessee. UT's volleyball team is also hard at work. Coach Kent Miller says despite having a couple injuries, the team is optimistic about this weekend's matches. The Lady Rockets take on OU Bobcats Friday night and Kent State on Saturday. For the Rockets, it's been a roller coaster season, but Miller believes the team needs to have confidence to win this weekend. We wish them luck. From football to volleyball to rugby, UT students seem to play it all. The Toledo rugby team started around 1974 and it is no longer a UT club sport, but the current team is made up of many UT students. The game of rugby is a popular overseas sport, which is gaining popularity in the States. It is similar to football with a few exceptions. Rugby and football are a little similar, but uh, rugby is more geared towards a little bit of soccer also. Um, it has the uh, same contact as football, but there's a lot of running involved, about the same as, uh, say, soccer. In rugby, the team must move the ball down the field and into the opponent's goal area in order to score. 
Football, I usually don't get the ball, but I get the ball, you know, I get to run a few people over. Unlike in football, there are no downs, and a team has possession until they score or the ball is stolen from them. Turnovers can occur by penalties or in a scrum, which is like face-off, but with 16 players. Players do not wear helmets or padding, making this quite a brutal sport. Everyone always came up to me that were like bigger than me. When I tried to get them to play rugby and they said no because they, they were afraid of getting hurt. They were like, look at me. The guys took on Grand Rapids last weekend and won 62-13. to They are undefeated this season. Wow, I, that's something I don't think I could ever do. I don't know, I kind of want to give it a try. You go try that, Phil. <laughs> we'll be back after the break. When seeking medical care, patients and their families should feel respect and compassion from their physician and hospital. At UT Medical Center, we believe in practicing university quality care. With more than 100 programs designed for convenience and comfort, patients can count on us to respond to their needs, treat them with dignity, and give them a voice in their care. To learn more, visit utmatters.com. It was first Centennial Hall, then it became Savage Hall, and with the recent renovations, it will have a new look and a new name. Reporter Casey Bailey takes us inside. Renovations are still underway at Savage Arena, but the outcomes, they'll be well worth the wait. Associate Vice President for Facilities and Construction, Chuck Leonard, gave me a tour and showed me the innovative construction that's going into Savage Arena. The arena now has loges, suites, and the inner stadium seats are now retractable with the push of a button. The entire building exceeds specifications required by the Americans with Disabilities Act. An updated boiler system will now power the entire university, and the boiler exhaust is shaped like a rocket and will be painted blue with rockets written on the side. Leonard is amazed at how the arena is coming together and believes UT is really going to benefit. The university students should be really proud that uh, this uh, arena will stand up to some of the finest arenas in the country. Crews have used recycled products from the old buildings during the renovation and UT is being considered for a gold standing by the U.S. Green Building Council. Leonard and his team have even added square footage to the building that uses the same amount of energy. The renovation is funded by money from UT and outside private sources, the grand total of $30 million, with a deadline of November 18th. Casey Bailey, UT10 News. Nearly 1,000 people attended an on-campus rally in support of reopening the Kosai Science Museum. The event on Tuesday was hosted by UT Science students on Centennial Mall. During the rally, COSI staff demonstrated several science experiments and students handed out informational pamphlets. UT Science educator Charlene Jerniak sees COSI as a beginning. We know in the next decade, all of the good paying jobs that are going to be available are knowledge based careers that, where we need people to have a good background in science and math. And COSI as a museum that interests kids in fun activities as a way to start to build that pipeline. If issue 37 passes, it will cost the owner of a $100,000 home a little over $5 annually. And that's it for UT10 News. We'd like to leave you with the sounds of UT Symphony Performance Tuesday night in Dorman Theater. If you have any stories or information you would like to share with us, please email us at ut10news at gmail.com. And remember, you can always watch your newscast on YouTube where you can get caught up on all of your campus news whenever you want. For Phil Levering, Melissa Chi, and all of our crew, I'm Matt Jasinski. Have a great week and stay tuned for more news from the UT campus.